What if I told you there is a non-league stadium in Scotland that is named after the top scorer in British club football history? You might not believe me, so let's go check it out for ourselves. Right, so firstly, could you just introduce yourself and let everybody know what you do here at St Rocks? I am Andy Cameron and I was honoured to be uh, voted on as president of the club at the last AGM. Uh, due to very sad circumstances, I'm also the interim manager of the club at the moment, up until the end of the season. Uh, my history at St Rocks, I came in as the manager um, eight years ago and spent five pretty successful years here as manager. I uh, started off at League Two. There's a, by the way, you'll hear in the conferences stuff people calling them all different names. So for the purpose of this, we'll talk about the Premier League, the champ, the Conference, League One and League Two. So we yeah. started off in League Two when I came here. Uh, got promoted in the first season, stayed up, then got promoted again to uh, what was called the Super League at that time was the Championship, and we stayed there in my fifth season. So we progressed every year. Yep. Um, and in the sixth season, got to a point where um, I thought it was the right time to step aside. The yep. results didn't start well that season. I stepped aside to become um, secretary, yeah. and during that time, uh, I became I started the development squad just to help out the first team. So development squads running on a Friday night now. Uh, so I'm still president and interim manager uh, at the moment for the club. Which, nice, which is a great honour. And how has this season been going? Obviously, off the park, it's been very difficult because of the circumstances that uh, if people don't know. Our, our manager passed away through COVID uh, in around about I think it was November, mm -hmm. which was sad for everybody. He had started the, the season pretty well with, with 10, 10 games uh, and we're now, for the conferences, you've heard a couple of people talking about that, we need to finish top four to get into, which was the Old Money Championship, which is league below the Premier League, which is tier seven. Yeah, it's a little bit complicated, oh, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So at the moment we're sitting in fourth place with four games to go and we need one point to secure that fourth place. Yep. Which uh, I think for everybody, I, I'm, I'm trying to encourage everybody that it's something to celebrate. People. Um, I think they've got the mindset that because we were in that championship um, that we're duty bound to finish there. However, if we never had a good enough season, we could have been in League Two. If we had a pretty bad season, we could be League One. But we've done enough. Yep. Now, hopefully, uh, and things go, unless things go incredibly wrong. At the point of filming, we're playing Peter Salt tomorrow. Uh, but at the time this goes out, probably next week. Hopefully, yep. hopefully. It'll, be, it'll be up oh. tomorrow, I think, for oh, the non-league well, day. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so hopefully we'll, you get the win tomorrow. Well, hopefully we get the win tomorrow. Right? And so um, you're obviously in the West of Scotland League, which, again, we've spoken about, is kind of sixth or seventh tier, depending on how you look at it. Yep. What are the plans for the club now that the pyramid system has been established? It's difficult. We, we would need to put in some sort of a five-year to ten-year plan. Um, because of the pyramid, th there's a, a, a definite opportunity for us in terms of entrance to the big Scottish Cup. For to do that, we'd need to get a licence, which involves a lot of... To be fair, a lot of the infrastructure that was necessary for that, we've already got in place, thanks to a number of our fans. See, see when you see these stands that you can see? Yeah. You can see the, gar the, the garden over there. Um, yeah. All the stuff that's inside the, 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 the park, all this fencing. Everything you can see was built by your fans for no cost. Uh, none of this was here five, yeah. six years ago. So it's incredible the amount of people that dedicate their time uh, to support the club. So you, you asked about the plans. The plans would be in the first instance to get the licence. In terms of owning the pitch, we need to be realistic. Um, as the president of the club, probably I should be saying where, where, where our ambitions are to go to the Premier League. However, there's a couple of reasons why that doesn't sit probably right with me. I don't think we are, we've got the infrastructure to be a, a, a a league team, if you like, uh, in the SPL. And the other thing for me is that if we did that, to get through the Premier League, we would need to invest a, an awful lot of money in players' wages. And the, the kind of club that we are, I don't think it would sit right with the number of people that we were spending hundreds of thousands of pounds on a budget for players when people run about this community is in poverty. So yeah. for us, for, for me, I, I think we're at the level we should be at the moment. It would be great if we could push on a wee bit and become a Premier League team and challenge at that level. You can obviously see the connection here between Celtic and St Rocks. Yep. The nickname is St Rocks because uh, the nickname is the Candy Rocks yep. because of the name St Rocks, Candy of course. Rock, right, yeah. And the connection between Celtic, you were saying this is a fan. Uh, Aye, Stuart Gordon passed away recently. This is where he used to stand. Yeah. Uh, we've got another one uh, over here as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, for, for other guys who have passed away. And obviously we can see over there James McGrory Park, uh -huh. named after Celtic's highest ever goal scorer yes. and the highest goal scorer in British football, yeah. football history, right? Yeah. So what is the connection between yourselves and Celtic then? Well, if you look at, to speak about James McGrory, the, 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 the connection between the two clubs is both were formed by parish priests from Irish descent and impoverished communities for yep. uh, to, to create a platform for the parishioners to uh, participate in sport. Uh, obviously, St. St Rocks were formed by Father Lawton in 1920, down in the parish just on the road. And uh, up to that point, we had a, a St Ox Guild team that was a, a, a parish team. Yep. So James McGrory lived in Melbourne Street, which is half a mile down the road, and he uh, played for St Ox Primary, the school team, and the St Ox Guild team. Come up to St Ox Juniors when we were formed, around about 1921, uh, and played in his most memorable moment for St Ox, played in the Scottish Cup final for us. 1922. Him and a guy called John Rollo scored the goals against Cowan and Rangers to win the Scottish Cup and the only time in our history, which is 100 years next, yeah. next month actually. Wow. Uh, so John Rollo went on to play for Rangers, um, but Jamie McGrory went on to play for Celtic and he kept a, a good bond with the club. Uh, there's connections, people ask about the connections that we've got uh, with Celtic and Celtic Foundation sponsored a lot of our charitable uh, and community stuff that we do uh, and we've got other links with the club, uh, that, for example, hopefully Celtic are bringing a, a team up here at the end of the season to play us to raise some money for Hermeyer's ICU, where yep. the manager passed away. But for uh, Celtic, probably, I've got a lot to thank us for. Yeah, of course, <laughs> uh, you were saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, Jimmy McGrory leaves St Rocks and goes on to become, as you know, the all-time top goal scorer. So I always say to people, if anything is grounded here, it, it might never have went and happened. And yeah, if that yeah. didn't happen, there's a number of things, catalogue of things that wouldn't have happened for Celtic Football Club. There was a domino effect you were telling me. Uh, aye, well, if you look at the, the, the big, big results for Celtic, uh, people talk about the 1957 League Cup final. Jimmy McGrory was the manager and signed all the players, two of the players being Neely Mockin and Sean Fallon, who later went on to be assistant manager of Jock Steen uh, and, uh, for the yeah. Lisbon Lions. Jim McGrory also signs uh, Mr Steen. But the, in terms of success on the park, we're quite limited. We didn't go to the next league one until uh, midway through the 60s. During that time uh, at St Rocks, uh, we were having a, a decent period of football and probably the cumulate, accumulating in the most successful team around about early 60s. Guys like Martin Welsh, who, again, another supporter who we, his scarf has left on there, but yeah. guys like Martin Welsh were in that team. But another man called John McStay was in that team, St Rocks team who's the father of Wally, Paul and Raymond McStay, who had spells for Celtic. The last players that signed directly from St Rocks to Celtic were Frank and Jim Brogan. Uh, Frank Brogan actually scored the 4,000th ever goal for Celtic. Mr McGrory scored the 2,000th. But Jim Brogan actually played in the 1970 European Cup final against Feyenoord, okay, signed yeah, directly yeah. from St Rocks. Uh, wow, from St Rocks to Celtic to play in the European Cup final against Feyenoord. Yep, yep, wow, that was yep. in the San Siro, I believe. Absolutely. Well. And yeah. as, as I said, the, 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 the seven or maybe even nine players that Mr McGrory signed for the Lisbon Lions, the guy who scored the winner didn't play here, but lived five minutes down the road, just round the corner from where Jimmy McGrory lived. So there were obviously Jimmy McGrory had a big influence on Stevie yeah. Jammers, who's a oh, grand yeah. boy, scored the winner. So that is Bertie Old's season ticket. So he was regularly coming to games here? Oh, he came in and done team talks and stuff like that. Even recently, yeah, but just oh, before he passed died. away. The, the, the day that we got promoted to the to, to the he, he came into changing room and done a team talk. I didn't need to say a word. And that's his, that's his season, season ticket. ticket there. You got to frame that and stick it in the in the club somewhere. Four, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. brilliant. You were saying that during one of the storms? Ah, uh, yeah, it was about October last year, November last year, in the big storm. Yeah. The, the, the were woe and, and turnstile blew in. And, and it's a much, it turns out it's a, we thought, well, I thought in my naivety that it was a quick fix job, but it turns out that we need like foundations and plans and so, so actually, well, you you get quite a lot of your sorry yeah, yeah. on your show, but if no, a hundred percent, yeah, that's what I'm. Company that's watching just now. That 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 road leads onto Royston Road, which is the second thoroughfare for the M8 motorway, yep. which means it's probably the second busiest road going into Glasgow and out of Glasgow, 
in the morning and the night. If a building company wants to come in and give us a wee bit of support to build that, yeah. they can have a sign up there for, let's call it three years, uh, but we need help. But basically, but may, maybe there's a Celtic uh, fan may, out there, uh, nah, who could and they might in. not know how much that they have to thank St. Um, Rocks thank for. Thank you. That so if good. there is a building company Sounds out there, good, Celtic mate. fan, then come yeah, and help come, out come because they yeah, need it'd be it, good. Yeah. We are actually, in terms of the, the progression towards the pyramid, we probably would need some sort of a segregation, which would mean two entrances. Yep. So getting a turnstile at this entrance would be ideal yep. for, for that plan. So if anybody out there wants to come in and uh, give us a wee bit of help, that would be brilliant. 100%, yeah. <laughs> As they say in Glasgow, I'm going to show you about You might say that for a long time. Love that, love that. Yeah, that's brilliant, that's brilliant. <laughs> He's been practicing that line. In the mirror at home, in the shower, yeah. If we uh, come in, this is the players' lounge. Uh, this has been done up in the last five years. Yeah. Part of the funding comes through this sort of thing because we do things like homework clubs and football academies. So uh, this this area here is free to any community group within the, the uh, area. I always tried to work out who this wee guy was. Never quite found out. We never found out who I he is. I found out right enough later on that this guy here was my wife's great great grandfather. Didn't wow. Know that yeah. Me. But anyway, there you go. All these teams over the years have kept the club going. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of my teams in it as well. There you go. Got to get your teams in uh, there. Yeah. yeah. But, I wouldn't say any successful teams, but you know, <laughs> actually, we've done all right. We've done okay. Charity Shield we won just a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is a, a tournament we won uh, through the Celtic Foundation. But this, this sport sort of sums up the kind of things we do. So we were recognised as the best community initiative in Glasgow. That's just a couple of years ago for all the different types of stuff that we do in the community. Yep. So we're, we're very proud of that. Nice what and there's McCrory trip. again. You can tell how uh, proud you are of, of course, McCrory. And is that one of the old strips there? That's SRFC? Strips, wow, right. yeah. And yeah, we were looking at some of the... Uh, Pennants you got up here, obviously right. Orkin Lake Tolbert are up there, yep. Genefield Swifts, Rossvale. A lot of you've visited will be there. I always like to come in and have a look at them, see what ones I've been to, yeah. Huntley. That, that mural's probably, that, that's the first of us in Rocks team. Um, the, the, this, this room, uh, we've decided we're going to turn into a, a sort of community gym. Yep. So we've already been donating some of the equipment, which you can see here. Uh, but it's going to take a bit of work, so what we'll probably look for at the moment, another plea. Of course, plug away, yeah, uh, plug away. Anyone who wants to help. A yeah. sponsor that would be willing to sponsor a community gym, come and speak to us. Uh, they could actually name this room in memoriam to somebody, maybe an ex-player or um, whoever. Uh, could maybe come in, or even a company. This is obviously our home strip. A big story here about a couple of you things. Um, that's the development team strip. But how we got funded for that was that fans for all the world paid to get their name on the strip. Uh, so it's really, I, I think it's quite, quite a class yeah, strip. That's good, yeah. Uh, and you were saying you've got the biggest social media following in Scotland? Well, in Scotland? We're probably bigger than some uh, SPL club. We've got 13,500 followers on Twitter. And you so think that's, that's due to the connection with Celtic as well? Of course, it is. Yeah. Of course, it is. Uh, uh, we've got followers for you all in the world Japan, Germany, across America. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's, there's. And can I just ask, is the badge, yep. is the star to do with. That's Mr. McGrory as well. That star is the Scottish Cup that we won in 1922. Ah, okay. So. It's very similar to Celtic's badge with the no, star they have for the, you for the uh, European Cup. You wouldn't think we ripped Celtic's gear off, for example. Where's my track? <laughs> right. See if you look at the Celtic tracky yeah. tracks, they're very, very similar. They are, yeah. I, think yeah. They I wonder copied, why. I think yeah. they copied us, they even copied us for that hoop jersey. Need to sue <laughs> this them. was centenary top again, yeah. uh, with numbers on it. This is the part I love the best. This was done by uh, some of the work that was done out there. We had an employability programme here, so all the, 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 all the stuff around about the stadium, not the, not the, the, the stands, was done by young people aged 16 to 24, getting some employable experience and part of that through City Building. They bought was a kit room. Ah, quality, yeah, nice. Class, isn't it? So people are getting experience in their trade, but it's also helping you out as well. And look here, as you can see, James McGrory Park. And let me just tell you what this man has achieved. He is the all-time leading goal scorer in top flight British football, with a total of 550 goals in 547 competitive first, first team games 
at club and international level. McGrory is a legendary figure within Celtic's history. He is their top scorer of all time with 522 goals in 501 games. He's notched up a British top flight record of 55 hat-tricks, 48 coming in league games and seven in Scottish Cup ties. There are arguments that he scored even more goals, but essentially he is a legendary figure from Celtic's past who ended up managing them, who ended up signing a lot of the Lisbon Lions. He even was the manager before Jock Steen took over in the mid to late 60s and then he obviously went on to win the European Cup. I've been to the stadium just recently where Celtic lifted the European Cup, the Estadio Nacional in Lisbon and none of that would have been possible. That video wouldn't have been possible. All the times I've covered Celtic's amazing history wouldn't be possible without this man here. We looked at the scarf just earlier of the, fa yep. of the fan who sadly passed yep. away. And you say there's plans for a memorial garden? Yeah, there's the scarf set up for guys like Johnny Barnes and uh, others, um, uh, Martin Welsh and we always mentioned Stuart. But the, the plans of this summer is on the left hand side of the pavilion over there. We're going to build a memorial garden so we'll have a more fitting, long lasting tribute to guys that's been associated with the club. Is it just Celtic fans who would uh, come watch football? No, there's, there's actually a range. Uh, there's well, to my head. Bristol City, Hearts, Partick Thistle Rangers, Dundee United. Notts Forest, Huddersfield, there's a Motherwell, uh, there's a number of them. Actually, there's a, a group of guys who created the St Rocks uh, badge recently yeah. and they call themselves the One Percenters, and that's a collection of fans who support other clubs outside Celtic. So 99% so um, would obviously be Celtic and then you got 1% who would be... 8.5. How many fans do you usually get here at games? Home games, uh, our average is probably between 250, 350. Yep, yeah. and you're saying how much it had increased over the years? Uh, when, I, when I first came up here, it was probably with about... I, I'm not exaggerating, probably there was about 20 hardcore fans that came to the games, there wasn't very many people. Yeah. See the guys that ran this club, um, they never had the access to like social media and stuff like that we've had, so we've been able to, for want of a better word, exploit that. Yeah. And obviously we've been able utilize. to... Utilise. Uh, utilise, yeah. we've been able to <laughs> yeah, utilise that. Yeah. Uh, so, so therefore, uh, we've been able to show the, the club's links with Celtic and with the community, we've been able to uh, show off the community work that we do, which means that we'd potentially get more sponsors and stuff yep. like that. So, uh, th the fact that we, we were still here eight years ago after a lot of trouble that the club went through was yep. testament to the guys that's run the club. But now we're at 250 uh, average, we're highest nice. attendance this season, probably about 800. That's amazing, yeah. Uh, we played Lark Call last week away from home, and there's probably 250 fans went away. Yeah, to away bit games of a proxy as well. old firm, that one. Aye, aye, we don't way. like to call it that, but aye, it can sometimes be a seen as bit, that. Yeah. By, uh, and so um, I'm going to be uploading this video on non-league day, uh -huh. which is like a, a thing that happens nationally yep. every year. Um, why should more people come and watch non-league football, and specifically this level here? Well, people can come in, for example, use this St Rocks as an example, but there's a number of clubs who say you see many as us. For again, the tier, it's £6 again. Uh, for people who are unemployed or OEPs, it's half that, it's £3. For under-16s, it's free. So you could come in here with 20 quid and you could bring your dad and your child. Um, you could get a couple of beers and pies um, for 20 quid. Yeah. Um, it's accessible. What people tell us here is that uh, they come up here for a game and they meet people they've not seen for 20 years and they come back, so sort of thing. So um, we're, 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 the volumes, the number of people coming to the games has increased uh, steadily. So it wasn't as if there was a peak and then uh, people fell away. People really enjoy coming here. Yep. And there's a number of clubs throughout the west of Scotland who are very, very similar. And uh, there's that community connection that they won't get at a, a senior club. People should probably visit every other club before they come here. Because when they come here, they'll never go anywhere else. <laughs> Love it. Look at that, got my own St Rock shirt and everything. Absolutely buzzing with that. It's only the second club to give me a shirt. I'm gonna put a uh, little quiz out there. Who is the other club to have given me a shirt? I've had like uh, sponsors and companies and stuff send me shirts, but I've only ever been given shirts on two occasions. One is at St Rock's, which is right here, and one is elsewhere in Scotland. Let me know in the comments if you remember where that is. 10 points to all of you who do. Yeah, a huge thank you to the guys who have shown me around today here. What a great stadium. What a lovely day to come as well. Absolutely beautiful scenes. And yeah, if it wasn't for this club here, Celtic wouldn't be anywhere near as, as, as successful as they are. So we have a hell of a lot to thank non-league football for. And especially on this weekend when it is non-league weekend. I hope to promote non-league clubs and stuff as much as I can because they, these are usually completely run by volunteers and they just need people to turn up and kind of... Uh, 
uh, keep the clubs going and stuff. So yeah, if you uh, have any suggestions of anything you've heard in this video about the gym inside or the stand that kind of broke um, due to the storms and stuff, then um, get in contact with the club. And maybe I've inspired you to go and watch some non-league football. So if I have, make sure you get down to your local club and support them today please hit that like button please do subscribe if you're new that little red button down there i heard it changes color if you press it so why don't you press it and see what color it changes to i will leave some videos on screen if you could click on one to carry on watching that would be highly appreciated thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one